Brett Steinhoff. We're here at Syracuse, Nebraska. I'm a fifth generation farmer. Uh, my wife and three kids. We farm 820 acres. It's all dry land. We're not in level land around here. It's pretty much just steeper clay hills, which we receive around 25 inches of rain per year. There's very limited amounts of irrigation around here. Our soil will hold the water that the crops can live off of for an extended amount of time, but eventually we will need another sufficient rainfall to keep the crops growing. So we grow corn, soybeans, which is pretty much a 50-50 rotation. We have a small amount of pasture, which accommodates about 25 cows and calves. Our on-farm storage, we can hold 35,000 bushels. I usually only store corn, small amount of beans. I'll try to keep maybe a third of my beans. I try to let my crops mainly mature in the field, which for corn, your optimum moisture is about 15%. I try to get my corn 15 to 17%. Um, any wetter than that, it's a little bit harder to keep it in good shape in the grain bins because I just blow air on my corn. I don't have a dryer or anything like that. So guys that do have a dryer, they may combine a little bit wetter, but they'll have a little more expense to get it dried down. And if the prices are bad, we might wait till summer. Usually we will have them empty by the upcoming fall, just so that way we have storage for our upcoming crop if we need it. This year, prices are better, so we're getting them emptied early. Last few years, it's been in the summertime. You can haul it straight to the elevator, but you'll pay a six cents per month storage fee, where we can eliminate that by just storing it ourselves. But it also costs money to put it in the bin, and it costs money to take it back out due to running the augers, running electricity, things like that. So you kind of got to keep all that in mind. Pretty much we're almost 100% no-till. Sometimes we do have to go out and do just a little bit of tillage to work up maybe some rough spots from the previous year. And by that, I mean, maybe there was some erosion from a hard rain. Maybe there was just a spot that isn't draining quite right. So we might have to go out and fix that, get it to drain right. And then we might just disc or field cultivate that spot to help the planter be able to put the seed in the ground better. But I'm a believer in the no-till, I guess, just for the fact I like to save the moisture. I think it works really good. We have had to equip some of our farm equipment to work into the heavy residue a little bit more, but I think it's money well spent. I mean, you're saving a lot of money on hours on your tractor. You're saving a lot of fuel, you know, not putting emissions back into the atmosphere. So about the last five years, we've been really lucky right here in Southeast Nebraska. We've had a few dry areas, but like right here on my farm, We've had timely rains, sufficient rains. Our crops have been well above the normal average. We've probably averaged anywhere from 175 bushel corn to 225 bushel corn. It's usually been somewhere in there. Soybeans have usually averaged anywhere in the upper 40s to low 60s. I mean, that's, that's really good for this part of the state. It's been pretty tough the last few years to show a profit, but this year, the prices are significantly better, so it's everything is looking up. And with the new uses they're finding for the soybeans, and as well as the corn, why I think the prices could possibly stay up. For our 2021 crop, we have pretty much sold it all. We have sold probably maybe as much as 25% of our 2022 crop. Right now, I'm kind of waiting to see what the prices do. Um, we're kind of in a oh, abnormally dry at the moment. So going into spring, I'm not quite sure, do I want to sell a bunch of grain and then not be able to deliver? Or should I just kind of hold off and see what the prices do? On everybody's mind around here right now is probably the weather. It's kind of dry, but yet it's not completely serious just because it, it is just early spring. So maybe we'll have a wet summer, which would be really good for us. Um, we are starting to get ready for planting, starting to get the equipment ready, get the sprayers ready, get the planters ready, get a lot of tractor maintenance, hopefully eliminate any foreseen downtime this spring so we can get our crop planted in a timely manner. Our calves, we actually will wean them probably around the middle of September and we will feed them for probably 30 to 45 days on our own farm. And then we usually take them to the local livestock auction and they'll be sold as feeder cattle. We don't really grind a lot of our own feed. I actually purchase it from the co-op. It's just easier. I don't have a lot of time and I don't really have the equipment for it. 
and I don't purchase a lot. We just mainly bale our own hay and we feed that to them throughout the winter. That seems to keep them in good shape. We're getting close to doing some pasture, what I call pasture maintenance, fixing fences, fertilizing the grass, kind of checking for weeds. And our cattle around here, we usually turn them out around the 15th of May, putting them on grass. And they'll be on grass until usually around the, probably the 10th of October when we combine our corn and then we usually run them in corn stover all winter. Usually take them off the corn stover around the 1st of March. Around here, the cattle will compact the soil, which is a little bit detrimental to the upcoming crop. 